From my first consciousness of Wayne Morris, I knew he was an exceptional person with a lot of force and a lot of independence. I want to say to not only this Democratic Convention, but to the people of America, that what we need to do on this issue is emancipate not only the Democratic Party, but the people of this country from the wrong foreign policy the Republicans started under Dulles, under the Republican regime in the 1950s. 1968 was a remarkable year in America. The riots and rhetoric of the 1968 Democratic Convention were just one reflection of the many conflicts in American society. Protest was growing as the war in Southeast Asia escalated. Two of America's humanitarian leaders were assassinated. The Progressive Era, the New Deal, the Great Society, was coming to a close. It was the year Vice President Humphrey lost to Nixon. It was the year Oregon Senator Wayne Morse lost to Bob Packwood. Morse, known as the Tiger in the Senate, was expected, in one analyst's words, to reduce young Packwood to oratorical rubble. But this was not to be. When Senator Morris went to the Senate in 1944, we were third from the top of all of the states in the West when you compared what we got, as opposed to what the federal government taxed. Today, it's 1968, 24 years of Senator Morris later, and we're last. Morris suffered a fatal kidney ailment in 1974 as he was mounting his challenge to regain his Senate seat. To many, it marked the end of an era. But the Morris legacy has not faded. It grows stronger. For Wayne Morris is remembered as a man of principle, firmly committed to our Constitution, to a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Wayne Morris was born in the year 1900 and raised on a farm outside Madison, Wisconsin. The land was fertile, as was the political climate. Political discussion dominated the evening meals at the Morris house, and the young Morris showed an early interest in liberal causes as a member of his high school debate team. As an undergraduate at the University of Wisconsin, Moore studied rhetoric, labor economics, and law. In 1922, Morse graduated, married Mildred Downey, and began graduate study at Columbia University. In 1929, Morse was recommended for a position at the University of Oregon Law School. Oregon was a curious mixture of generally conservative politics and progressive political notions, such as initiative, referendum, and recall. It was here that Morris began to fine-tune his knowledge of progressive politics and constitutional law to promote an idea he called constitutional liberalism. In 1931, Morris was made dean of the law school, becoming the youngest law dean in the U.S. By 1938, Morris's progressive ideas had come to the attention of the Roosevelt staff, and Morris was appointed West Coast arbitrator for maritime disputes. In 1941, he was appointed by Roosevelt to the National War Labor Board, where he served for two years and established himself as a man of integrity. Morse believed that labor, properly organized, was a force for stability, not agitation. Private enterprise left unchecked was totalitarian. Government must preserve and promote individual rights. From the earliest days of his GOP affiliation, Morse failed to gain the support of the powerful conservatives within the party, his commitment to progressive principles and his common man persona earned him the support of average working Americans, labor, farmers, minority groups, and teachers. Morris showed strong independence of thought during the post-war years. He often voted against Senate GOP leadership, particularly in regards to United Nations and world court issues, and in his opposition to Joseph McCarthy. His support amongst GOP leadership continued to decline. By 1951, Morris was being excluded from state and national party campaigning, and in 1952, Morris left the Republican Party. Morris was now an independent. During the Eisenhower administration, Morris systematically opposed GOP legislation which sought to utilize natural resources such as forests, rivers, and tidelands in ways which would ultimately benefit private rather than public interest. In 1954, Morris became a Democrat. In 1956, Morris returned to the Senate as an elected Democrat and earned a footnote in history as having been elected twice as a Republican and twice as a Democrat. Perhaps Morris is best remembered for his early and unwavering opposition to U.S. involvement in Southeast Asia. In 1964, Morris began his formal opposition to the war. We're now killing American boys in Vietnam without even a declaration of war. It continues to be an immoral, illegal, and unjustifiable war that 
at uh, capsules at all into a brief digest of my point of view. In 1966, Morris became one of just two senators who refused to support Johnson's Tonkin Gulf resolution. His stand earned him the Gandhi Peace Award, yet his popularity in the Senate and among his constituents was on the wane. His last campaign as a Democrat, like his first as a Republican, was underbudgeted with virtually no finance from state Democrats or special interest. In the soul of, Saint, of Wayne Morse, we found the likeness of our state. Senator Morse was a lover of righteousness, confident in the liberties of the people, he was clean in justice, bold in freedom, gracious in victory. His spirit never was, nor now will it ever be, defeated. Morse of Oregon, we shall not soon see his like again. On behalf of the Senate of the state of Oregon, I offer our profound sympathies to the wife family and friends of our fellow senator, our fellow legislator, Wayne L. Morris.